it seems, you guys, that the choice has been made and you're moving forward now. On the table, you have the Two of Wands in reverse, which reflects the choice of the lovers here, okay? There's a choice that has been made for your highest good to move in some sort of direction or to take some sort of action, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. You have that with the chariot. Hello everyone, and welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is gonna be your general energy reading for your day or for your moment. Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you at that time. But do keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't, as everything is not going to resonate for everyone. Also, this is a timeless reading, okay? So this, again, it could be for your day or just for your moment whenever that day or moment finds you. Yes? Cool. Um, okay, so I have a little bit of uh, announcement, I guess, to make. Um, I want to talk a little bit, clarify some things, some questions that someone had. And then we're going to get into the reading. So if you would like to skip this part, make sure to check the comp, the um, the timestamps in the description box and or the comment section down below. Now, um, so like I announced yesterday, I do have a new channel. Um, it's a love channel. The name of the channel is Mystic Unicorn Tarot, not Mystic Unicorn Readings. It's Mystic Unicorn Tarot. Link can be found in the top right of your screen, also in the description box and the pinned comment down below. Um, and somebody asked a question, and actually a very good question, um, Kate. Thank you for asking this question, Kate. So Kate is asking, um, you know, for a little bit of clarification in terms of the new channel. Um, and she's asking about the Twin Flame journey. If I'm going to be reading for the Twin Flame journey there, since or, or am I going to be doing here or whatnot, whatever, and uh, asking for a little bit of clarification. Her, her question is in the comment section of yesterday's video, which was titled, um, you chose to, you chose to let go, uh, that morning coffee video. If you want to actually read her comment just to see what she said. But, um, so as far as the twin flame situation goes, first of all, um, I want to clarify that I'm not expressly going to be reading for the twin flame journey. Um, but that does not mean that readings wouldn't necessarily apply to your Twin Flame situation. I'm going to be very honest with you. There's a part of me, and maybe this is a part of my ego, and this is also a part of why I refused to really focus on love specifically. Um, I, I'm, st I'm personally still trying to deal with a lot of the stigma of the Twin Flame journey, and a lot that happened for me, like there are still things that come up. The person is still being mentioned in my head and, and okay, that's fine. Um, but I feel like there, I, I just personally feel like I don't necessarily want to dive into the twin flame situation the way I did in the past. Um, and I understand it was very helpful to people, but... I personally don't believe that you have to listen to a specifically twin flame reading in order to get the messages that you would need in that situation. With that said, I have been thinking about doing like divine feminine readings on Mystic Unicorn. But here's my process, my thought process surrounding that because I was actually, and it's so perfect that Kate, you asked this question when you did because I didn't see your question until this morning when I got up and I was getting ready to sit down and do morning coffee. And I was literally having this thought process in my head last night while I was in and out of sleep. Because my original idea was to, I, I got the inspiration to do a divine feminine reading for the, for, on, over on Mystic Unicorn, okay? Um, Divine Conversations is becoming a space that's more about the topic of ascension. 
um, the topic of extra, uh, like just like extra dimensions, like all that stuff and getting higher, and getting higher in the dimensional ladder and doing like inner child work and doing a lot of healing work and having all of those woo woo conversations that maybe the mainstream or the general collective doesn't necessarily want to have is or is not interested in. And that's why Mystic Unicorn was started because it seems to me from my observation, people kind of work their way into all this extra woo woo stuff through the realm of love. Okay. All like people do are doing all these getting wrapped up in all these love situations and then somehow or some way they start to figure it out or they start to wake up and they start to ask all these extra questions. That's what divine conversation seems to be turning out to be for. Mystic unicorn is like that first step. It's like where people go to find the love messages, to find the messages about interpersonal relationships without having to deal with all that extra woo woo stuff, right? But for that channel, I had already felt like I wanted to do a divine feminine reading. But then my thought process around that ended up becoming, well, wait a second, Eric, if you're gonna do a divine feminine reading, then you might as well also do a divine masculine reading. Why would you leave the masculine out of the situation? And then that's when my ego peaked up and it's like, whoa, are we getting back into the twin flame situation again? I thought we weren't doing that anymore. And now I'm kind of like, shit, you're right, ego. I don't really know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. So, I came to a resolution at that time during my thought process and I thought, okay, well maybe we should just do a reading for divine counterparts in which maybe you identify with this as your twin flame. Maybe this is just a very spiritual thing for you. Maybe you just, you know, allowed God source creator or the universe to play matchmaker for you. Or maybe you just have this really intensely strong connection with someone, but that's outside of the realm of a normal loving relationship or romantic relationship, but also isn't as far to the right or the left, however you want to say it as the twin flame journey, this, that, and the third. I mean, there's a very fine line. I'm still trying to think, I'm still trying to figure that out, you guys. I do know that if there is enough demand for it, I can make it happen, okay? Um, I just personally, I know that so many of us here on Divine Conversations have completely been just like, whatever, I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna hear about that any longer. I'm more focused on me, that I've, I've kind of gotten really comfortable with that. But the reason, but you see, the whole reason why I started Mystic Unicorn was because I wanted to be of better service to the collective. So if the collective needs these twin flame readings, then you guys need to let me know because if it's there, if it's really a need for it, then I'll do it. And especially with the fact that with Mystic Unicorn, I'm, I'm Mystic Unicorn, I'm looking to cast a net to kind of, you know, um, catch the attention of a greater collective of people, a greater group of people, which may not necessarily be ready to talk about what we're talking about here on Divine Conversations. It makes perfect sense to me why those twin flame readings would be needed, okay? So to answer your question, the first part of your question, Kate, I just heard myself answer the question. Yes, I will do it if the demand presents itself. But please understand that I am not going to approach the twin flame journey from your typical woo woo, everything's gonna be okay, the union is coming, the divine masculine is coming to you, this, that, and the third. I am not approaching it from that point of view. I am approaching it from a healing point of view, which is why I kind of took that narrative out of the situation and just started talking to the general public about healing and took the twin flame label off of it because everybody needs healing. Everybody deserves healing. Now that gets us back into, that gets us to the second part of your question, Kate, that I want to answer. Because what you were asking is what about individuals in which who have lost their twin flame, um, maybe like they passed away or something like that. Does the twin flame journey end in that sense? Does that in the third? First of all, I want to say I'm not an expert on it. I mean, I have my own point of view, but points of view are subjective. But from my point of view, I wouldn't think that just because maybe your twin flame in the unfortunate event that your your twin flame passed at an early age um, before you guys could reach union or anything like that, 
that would not be a reason for to me or for me to say that the twin flame journey is ends. I personally don't believe that the twin flame journey ends ever um, in, in, in a single incarnation. It's entirely possible, now that I'm thinking about it, it's entirely possible that the journey continues over multiple lifetimes. But we let's, whoa, 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 relax. <laughs> relax. Uh, but um, it's very similar to with like the situation in which like for me, I've, I identified with the twin flame journey at one point. I was reading for it. It was all in alignment with a bunch of other people. But as far as the individual goes, I'm very much like not even trying to not even trying to go down that path, even though I still hear the person's name being mentioned in my head. Like lately, I've been hearing when I just settle, when I'm feeling good, when I'm in my space, my guides come through and they say his name and they say he's coming to you. And it's like, you guys, I don't I don't care. But but in the event that you're twin may have passed, I still don't believe that the, tw the twin flame journey is over because I see the twin flame journey as much more than a romantic situation, okay? Me and Betsy, and, and Betsy put me onto this. If you don't know Betsy, Betsy is of fearless intuition. She's one of my very, very dear friends. Um, she's of in fearless intuition. She's here on YouTube. But Betsy put me onto this and I, I snatched it up real quick. But this way of describing the twin flame journey, the twin flame journey is a, it, it, the, the, the romantic end, the romantic side, the ending up in a divine union or a marriage or a life partnership with that specific individual that is your twin flame. That is literally the cherry on an already iced cake. Okay. That is the, that is like one of the, least important aspects of the twin flame journey, at least from my point of view. Because what I've come to understand go, I, from going through it myself is that the twin flame journey is more about your own healing process and, find, and, and walking a path of healing that would get you back to a state of wholeness rather than a state of fragmentation where we all find ourselves having grown up in this societal structure, okay? And having gone through all of the things that we've gone through as kids in our personal lives and in the overarching uh, like uh, uh, realm of society over thousands of years, right? Okay, so what's more important, in my opinion, for the twin flame journey is the healing process of on behalf of the individual. And then that individual feels charged or has the ability to then lead by example, whether you find yourself to be a healer or whatever. You could, I mean, you could, I don't know, you could work at a, you could work as a barista, okay, at fucking Starbucks. It doesn't matter what it is you do in your life physically it's more about doing your healing work and then and then being an example to the rest of the world by by living your best life by being your healed self by telling your story by going out there in the world and spreading love and spreading healing and sharing all that stuff right it doesn't necessarily have to be about being with in a romantic partnership with that other person Okay, and in the event that the other person has passed away, I mean, obviously that's not not going to happen, right? And I don't mean to be insensitive, but like the person passed away, so that doesn't mean that your journey ends. No, Jinx, you're not going outside. I just let you in. I told you not to let me, girl. These cats. Anyway, um, sorry. I lost my train of thought. I fuck. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys. I had to let Jinx out. Um, okay, so now it's more. It, it to me, it's more. It's more than just uh, figuring out what's going on with the divine masculine, or if you're the divine masculine, figuring out what's going on with the divine feminine. Um, and trying to do everything you can to make with do everything you can with union with a specific person in mind. I feel personally, my point of view on the twin flame journey is about 
doing the healing work so that you can come into union with yourself. Because ultimately you can't, you're not in control of anyone else other than your own self, right? So that's also why I personally am of the opinion that even if you do have an individual on this physical plane, or at least you did at one point in the event that the person passed, my condolences, but you, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to end up with them because that person may decide to do something completely different. Okay, that takes them so far off the path or so off so much so far down a detour that you guys there is there may no be no possible way there may be no uh, no way to do the amount of healing that would need to do for you two to come together in this incarnation. But that, that does not but that does not mean that you are plagued by not being able to have a partner. Like if if the person that you originally uh, said made an agreement with said okay well we're gonna end up together in this lifetime but then they decide to go do something else or you decide to go do something else that doesn't mean that either one of you are gonna be left out in a lurch and are not going to get what you desire you're not going to receive what you desire that does that to me is absurd but again that's my point of view okay so but the, but see this is all a reason why and maybe and maybe. I feel like Kate, I feel like you've been following me for a long time. So I feel like you may have known this, but if you didn't know this, that's why I changed my narrative. That's why I changed the narrative from the twin flame journey and focusing so much on what's going on between the masculine and the feminine in the external and why I changed everything to working internally. Why we started focusing on the masculine inside of us and the feminine inside of us instead of externally, because literally you guys, that's the only thing we have control over. Okay, so with all of that said, to be honest with you, I feel like you would be able to find messages for both, uh, uh, from both channels, both Divine Conversations and uh, Mystic Unicorn. Quite frankly, if you really are deeply entrenched in this Twin Flame situation, then I feel like it may, it would be much better for you it would be it would behoove you to listen more or to be a part more of more of a part of the conversation on divine conversations rather than on mystic unicorn because mystic unicorn isn't trying to really go too much deeper than just the surface level interpersonal relationships which is not bad, okay? I may have sounded like I was bashing that in the past, and yes, I probably, yes, okay, no, 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 Eric, full disclosure, be honest. I was bashing that in the past because I was not ready to accept it, I was not ready to handle it, I was not ready to view it. But now I see the value in it, and but I also see the value in separating the two, giving people an option to either stay surface level if that's what they wanna do, or to go deeper. Divine Conversations is where we go deeper. And I, I, quite frankly, Personally, it's my belief that if you're really on this twin flame journey, okay, you're going to want to go deeper because this is more about us as individuals doing our own individual healing work and showing up and following through with our mission, serving our mission as individuals, okay? Another thing about it is that about the twin flame journey that's gotten all misconstrued was the fact that People, some people think or feel like they can't serve their mission without their divine counterpart. That's malarkey, okay? You are still an individual with free will. And again, you have no control over another individual with free will, okay? They may choose not to follow the path, not to do the work, not to do the healing, and not to show up for the mission. That doesn't mean that you don't have to. And that doesn't mean that you're going to be blocked from doing whatever whatever it is you came down to in this incarnation to do just because homeboy or homegirl has a case of the ass and doesn't want to get with the program. Like, okay, and like no shade to them. It's their life. Let them do what they want to do. But at the same time, it's not going to hinder you at all, okay? Um, so, wow, this was like a reading in itself. Uh, so we're going to get into the reading section of this in a moment, but I just, I really hope, I hope that answers your question. If anything else is still unclear, please let me know. I invite you to leave it down in the comment section. I, I mean, I don't mean any hate or malice here. I would really like to help get this clarified for people. Um, so let me know if that helps. Let, let me know, put it down in the description box. If that leaves you with more questions, again, 
put it down, not in the description box, put it in the comments. Also, if you have suggestions, if you, I'm open to the suggestions. These channels are for, for the community, okay? It's not me being a big old dictator here saying what we will and will not do. Of course, I have to set my own boundaries. Uh, between, I have to set my own boundaries for what it is I'm, I'm capable of and what it is I'm comfortable with. And I'm ready to dive into love, but and I'm ready to dive into that surface level thing. If that's what you want, that's great. I can do that for you. I understand that now. But leave your comments and your and your your suggestions and your opinions and your thoughts of view, your points of view, whatnot. Leave it down in the comment section below. We'll have we'll continue the conversation on this. Yes. Excellent. Okay, great guys. So um, I want to get into this here. 20 minutes into the video, but that's okay. We needed to have that conversation. We needed to have that discussion. And I encourage you guys to um, really engage with me here. Let me know, okay? I, I mean, this is, a, this is a community for us. This is a community for healing. And whatever it is we need to do for healing, then we need to do that. Now, someone did say yesterday that they are, they did appreciate the fact that I'm splitting the two apart because they're not really focused on love. Uh, even though they're in a relationship or a marriage, I think they said, that's kind of like mm, iffy. Um, that's still not what they focus on. They're more focused on healing the inner child. And and when I read that comment yesterday, that piqued my interest. I was like, ooh, that should be a that definitely should be a direction that we focus on here on uh divine conversations. Meaning, I already have an idea for doing a pick a card reading with messages to connect with the inner child. Let me know what you think about that down in the description box below. But see, that's where, and I know I started this channel on the Twin Flame journey. I, I, I get that, you guys. And if I need to, if I need to approach the Twin Flame journey again, then I will. I, I, I oh, see, now, even as I'm talking through it now, I'm starting to think, well, maybe, if I am going to approach the twin flame journey, maybe I should do it on divine conversations because the twin flame journey is something much deeper than just a surface level, you know, karmic or soulmate relationship. All right. I did just hear spirit say, Eric, yes, you, yes, Eric, you need to approach the twin flame journey again. All right. So let me, let me, let me, let me pose the question to you guys this way. If I need to, since I need to, to, to approach the twin flame journey again, what about the twin flame journey do you guys want to talk about? What do we need to talk about? And do you think, maybe I should put this as a poll in the community section. Do you think it would be beneficial or better to discuss the twin flame journey here? to 2222 on the counter. Should we discuss the twin flame journey here or should we discuss it on Mystic Unicorn Tarot? You guys let me know. I'm, I will tell you this, I am hesitant to discuss it on Mystic Unicorn. And that's because of how things went when I first started. Now I'm not, I'm not the same person that I was when I first started reading for people and when I started doing the twin flame journey. Um, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it for people. And I'm not going to sit here and, and start to create false hope. If you need to heal something, if there are things that you need to look at yourself, I'm going to tell you. So would it, be, would it be better to do that here or would it be better to do that on Mystic Unicorn? You guys let me know. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to get into the reading now. All right, I'm going to use, actually, no, I don't want to use this deck today. I want to use the Witch's Tarot today. Save the Golden Universal for, not the Golden Universal, the Golden Art Nouveau for another one. So we're using the uh, Witch's Tarot today. And then I have my Los Carabello deck for clarification. However, with us already being in 20 minutes in, 20, almost 25 minutes in now, um, I may not do clarification today. Yeah, just for time, I may not do clarification, but I do want to sage the deck a little bit. So we're going to get into this here. Again, this is just going to be a general message for your day, for your moment, for whenever, all right? 
Excellent, you guys. Timeless reading. Perfect. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. High Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good for all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, kids, let's give this five shuffles and see what we've got. Yeah, this is one. This is two. <clears throat> this is three. This is four. And this is five. Oops, try that again. This is five. Nope, nope. Third time's a charm. This is five. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, kids. What have we got for today? What messages do we have for the collective today, please, Spirit? What's going on for the collective today? Moving forward. Moving forward. The time for decisions. The time for deliberation, the time for choices to be made is over. Wait, oh, the whole deck is reversed. Okay. You have the lovers at the bottom of the deck, which is so interesting because we just spent all like all, damn near 30 minutes talking about the twin flame journey. And what is the overall energy here? The lovers. Hmm. Okay. But let's keep it focused in how we've been focusing things here so far or lately. Yes, you do. Because because ultimately, even though the lovers can represent, uh, you know, a divine partnership, divine union, twin flame stuff, whatnot, whatever. It also ultimately outside of the twin flame journey, it represents a choice. Sorry, I thought Jinx was like scratching at the door trying to get back in. If you don't know, like y'all don't know here, if you're not on Patreon, then you don't know. But I've gotten into this mode lately where I've completely shut myself out from the rest of the world. Like when I'm here in my apartment, I keep my doors and my windows closed and the shutters down and the blinds pulled because I've been working on expressly cultivating my own... Ah, I've been working on expressing my uh, expressly cultivating my own space in which outside influence does not get in and cannot screw things up for me. But that's a little bit of a problem or a topic of contention for the cats because they grew up having a door, an, an open door policy. Like before I even got them, they had, they grew up in a house of an open door policy where like the doors were always open, which is natural here because if you don't have air conditioning, you're gonna wanna have some airflow, right? So they are, they're so used to coming and going as they please and now this is a little bit difficult for them. So like I'm constantly having to go let them in, let them out, let them in, let them out, blah, blah, blah. So that's why that's going on. But this whole thing of me uh, cultivating my own space is relevant to this situation because it seems, you guys, that the choice has been made and you're moving forward now. On the table, you have the two of wands in reverse, which reflects the choice of the lovers here, okay? There's a choice that has been made for your highest good to move in some sort of direction or to take some sort of action, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. You have that with the chariot, okay? Two of wands is in reverse. Now, the two of wands actually for some of us here is representing uh, other people, other people trying to influence you, other people trying to make your decisions for you, other people trying to coerce you into making certain decisions. 
But what I'm getting with the Two of Wands here in reverse is that you are rejecting that outside opinion. And you are focused on what is best for you, what is within your highest good with the lovers being your overall energy. Now, also, like I said in the beginning, the Two of Wands could just represent you having to make that decision on the physical realm and having come to that decision with it in reverse, okay? Now, you have three other cards here. This wanted to turn upright, all right. Right, right. All of these need to be upright because the whole deck was reversed. Excellent. The two of wands stays reversed. Okay. But next what you have here is the nine of wands, death, and the four of wands. And um, I, I'm already feeling like I know I want to clarify the Nine of Wands, I think. You know, Eric, or you think? I'm not sure. Leave me alone. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 okay, so what you have, what you have is the Nine of Wands, Death, and the Four of Wands, and to me, this is just, this is just confirming that you're following through with whatever choice that you've made in whatever direction that it is you're wanting to go in. This was a mass, this is a major choice and it's trans and it's and it's facilitating. It's facilitating a transformation for you. Okay, a big transformation. A big transformation that is in direct alignment with you and the foundation that you built within yourself. The foundation that you have within yourself, spiritually, emotionally, creatively, whatever, energetically, whatever, is what is providing the, the, the base for this transformation to flourish or to be underway at all, okay? So basically, the, the, the message here is that the choice has been made and you're moving in, you're moving in the direction of that choice. And me being in this energy of really like part of the reason why I also feel like it was important for me to share what I'm going through right now in terms of like closing myself out from the outside world is that that is part for me, that is part of the choice that I made in the direction that I'm trying to move in. And I recognized that allowing, constantly allowing outside energies to get into my space was sabotaging me, was causing trouble, was causing friction, was influencing me in ways that I, that were so subtle, I was unable to really be aware of it until it was too late. And now I'm dealing with the after effects and now I have to pull myself back together. But, and I will, I will say I've only really truly been in this energy for a week. It will be a week, it will literally be a week tonight since I started doing this stuff. It was last Tuesday, last Tuesday night, after having experienced certain things that, you know, are an ongoing thing for me right now. Again, if you're on Patreon, you know what I'm talking about. But it was, it was, it was last Tuesday night that I finally made the decision to close my doors, close my windows, close the shutters on my windows, pull the blinds on my windows, whatever blinds I had. I only have one pair of blinds that needs to be pulled, but, um, and, and maintaining that and then saging the absolute shit out of my apartment to clear out all the, all the old energy. Of course, I kept the windows open long enough for the sage to do its thing and for the energy to escape, but then I closed them and I spent, and I focused on filling the space with purely my own energy. Energy that I was pulling in from my higher self as I've been trying, working on developing and strengthening that connection with myself and my higher self and my inner child. And then allowing that energy to fill my space. And a week into this, you guys, I already feel a massive difference. I feel so activated at this point. But it's all because I've been able to cultivate my own energy and get that flow going. And now that's got me in alignment with where it is I'm trying to go. Okay. So I say all that to say that you don't necessarily have to make that decision. You don't necessarily have to go to those types of lengths. lengths. 
But if it piques your interest, if it sparks your fancy, I highly encourage you to check it out because you guys, it has been, it has worked wonders for me. And on top of that, I am, I am absolutely not hanging out with anybody. Okay. I mean, like, not to say that I hate people, but I also found that the more I spent time out in public, the more off I was thrown, the more off of my center I became. And I had to spend extra time trying to pull myself back to center. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really understand how influential or how how influential outside energy outside energies could be now i live in puerto rico so all of the energy here is completely foreign to me right it's not it's like it's not it's I like I'm like it would be one thing if i moved from new york to mississippi or alabama or north dakota or colorado or M minnesota you know something like that Obviously, those energies are very, very different to New York and are damn near, are damn sure different to New York City, right? I mean, they're even different to upstate New York, the country of New York, okay? But it's still the United States. I'm in Puerto Rico. This is a completely different country. And don't even, don't even start with me about, oh, Puerto Rico's part of the United States. Don't go there, okay? It's a completely different country. The energy is completely different, Okay. So it was one thing for me to understand that when I was going out and hanging out with all my friends here and blah, 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 and being out in public, being down in town with all of the energies that are down there. Sure. Okay. You could, I could say, all right. Yeah, I understand why I'm off center. I didn't realize, I didn't realize you guys that just being at home by myself Allowing all of the foreign energies from Puerto Rico and where, where, whatever is surrounding me, allowing all of that to get into my apartment was also throwing me off. And I don't mean no shade or no hate, okay? Like, I'm just, I'm just becoming so energetically sensitive and so aware of that sensitivity that I'm recognizing the steps that I need to take to really ensure that I'm staying centered. And the next part of that step for me has been shutting my doors and shutting my windows and not letting the energy in. Sure, I'll still go outside. I'll still go sit out in the back. I'll still go sit out in nature. Man, let me tell you, I had to do that yesterday, yo. I got into some arguments with people yesterday. Woo! That just like I had to go outside and sit out in the in in the sit out in the woods in in nature and ground myself. But then once I did that, I came back right, right, back right inside and everything was okay. All right, so I'm saying all that to say, you guys, we are in a position as a collective right now, moving forward with what it is we've chosen to do, what it is we need for ourselves that is facilitating a big, big transformation for us, okay? And whatever it is you need to do for that, go for it. Do it because it is within your best interest. Okay. Excellent. I do want to clarify. Just a small amount. I just want to get some quick clarification on death, the nine of wands and the four of wands. All right. So we're going to, we're going to reach over to our Los Carabello deck. I'm going to give this three or four, four shuffles. One. This is two. This is three. And this is four. Have you guys, have you guys noticed that my upper lip sweats? It's kind of gross. <laughs> and you can really see it like right after I've shaved. I've watched some of my videos back like, cause I've been, this is a total tangent, but I've been using um, a, a razor, like disposable razors and shaving cream to shave my to shave my face. Uh, it's a much cleaner shave. I like it. Um, but but you can see the 
why am I even talking about this? Moving on, let's <laughs> let's clarify. Four of Wands, Nine of Wands, and Death. Can you clarify this for us just a bit, please, Spirit? The, ta the Tower. Anything else, please, Spirit, to clarify? Four of Wands, Nine of Wands, Death. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Overall energy is the queen of wands. Okay. So however it is you are moving forward here, whatever transformation you are going through here, this is in direct, this is in direct alignment with you. And what I was going to say was, it's not just, it's not just that like, you know, you are getting in, you are focusing on you and you're getting into your energetic signature. You're becoming more aware of your energetic signature and all that stuff. But I mean, yes, that is part of it. But another massive, big, 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 huge part of it that needs to be taken into account, that needs to be acknowledged for what it is, is the fact that this alignment that you are standing in that is facilitating this transformation for you is absolutely 100% a choice. There's the lovers, and then there's the four of wands again. Oh, wow. With the two of cups. The minor arcana version of the lovers. Just like the two of wands would be the minor arcana version of the lovers in terms of a choice to be made, right? To be made, right? Okay. And then underneath the two of cups is temperance. So this is literally a choice that you have made, okay, from, from a very stable place, from a place of internal union, four of, four of wands, two of cups, the union of the masculine and the feminine within you, okay? And then there's that representation of it again, the, con the confirmation that you have the alchemy here, temperance, the fusing of those two energies within you that is causing you, allow that is allowing you, that is allowing you to make a really big choice in terms of what it is you wish to be in alignment with, what it is you wish to move forward with. The lovers twice with the queen of wands here. Yes. Uh, yes. Queen of, queen of wands. Queen of wands was at the bottom of the deck. All right. So with this, what we have here is the tower. Big change. Massive upheaval. You know, uh, Cassia said this in one of her readings yesterday. Uh, I believe it was a reading for Uranus and retrograde. And if you don't know who Cassia is, Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia, check her out. Homegirl is soul sister to the max. Okay, what's up, Cassia? Um, Y'all, I mean, she is 100% part of this soul group, soul family. Y'all got to check her out. Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. I'll throw her her information down in the description box below. All right, to her channel if you haven't. I've, I've shared something of her channel before, but I'll throw her information down in the description box and the pinned comment for you guys to see. Check her out if you want to. But what she said about the tower is that the tower um, is often related to Marsh, to Martian energy or to Mars energy. But actually, when you think about it, and like when she said this, my mind, ex my head exploded. I was like, whoa, Cassia, stop being such a fucking genius. But the tower can actually seen, be seen more as Uranian energy. Because Uran Uranus is the planet of mystery, the unknown, sudden changes, things coming out of left field, like just like like completely out of nowhere, massive change, change in direction, like like that kind of crazy chaos type of curveball type energy, right? And that's often what the tower represents. Here, however, the tower is a very conscious thing. It feels very conscious, at least, because you've consciously made a choice, and that choice is bringing the destruction or an upheaval of all that is no longer in alignment with you. Okay, you have that with the world and the Ten of Cups. I'm getting two things with the world and the Ten of Cups. One, there is a closing of past circumstances that is leading you towards greater emotional fulfillment. But also, there is a closing of some sort of communal energies that may have held you back in the past with this world and the Ten of Cups, okay? And then finally, you have one last card that has fallen face down. It's an underlying energy. It's what's underneath the surface. All of this is in service of self-mastery. Three of Pentacles. Rebuilding yourself, reshaping yourself, reshaping your foundation. 
Okay. Fuck yeah, guys. This is awesome. All right, I want to close out our reading with some oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle, yeah? I swear to you guys, I went out with some of my friends on this past Friday night. We went to, and, and I went out specifically because the plan was to go to um, a drag show here in Puerto Rico. And I have only ever seen one drag show. It was at a birthday party and it happened and it was great. And it just so happened to be the same drag queen that was at that birthday party. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's go see her. I want to support this bitch, right? So we went, we had a great time. I am so happy that I went. Like, I'm so happy because it was like, it, it was, it was a fucking awesome night. But I, I tell you what, man, when I tell you it took me a whole 24 hours to recover from that, it took me a whole entire 24 hours to recover from that. Y'all didn't see me here live doing anything on Saturday, last, last Saturday, because I was recovering from that, okay? This increase in sensitivity is a thing, you guys. It really is a thing. Let's get our closing oracle guidance from the Lightworker Oracle, yeah? Four shuffles here. One. Two. Three. And four. All right, guys, closing oracle message for this reading. Here it is right there. What? <laughs> Card number four. Okay, four is the number of this, of this message right here. It's all about the fours. It's all about stability, foundation, and a, st a stable foundation that creates a what? A paradigm shift. Stop. Mm -mm -mm. Card number four. You are undergoing radical growth in your belief systems. Now is the time to challenge old attitudes and question previous expectations. You are in an extraordinary time. Great leaps forward can be make in a made, excuse me, great leaps forward can be made in a moment. The world you thought you knew can suddenly break open and a new world can become your reality. Let's see. Is there anything else I want to say about this? Nope. Nope. Okay, I'm going to read this last paragraph, all right? You are encouraged by the universe to embrace the power you have to be a free thinker. Accept the accelerated mental shift happening for you, even if it creates temporary uncertainty or discomfort. Dare to think thoughts of love rather than lower your vibration by choosing thoughts of fear. Trust for something helpful and empowering is happening in your soul. Excellent. There you have it, you guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I love you all so freaking, freaking much. I hope you have a fantastic day. Again, please don't hesitate to let me know what you're feeling. Give me your thoughts, your feelings, and your suggestions in the comment section down below. Yes? All right. I love you guys. Have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>